Good morning, modern steaders. The pigs weren't up yet. I see them coming running now. Pork, where's chops? Oh, there you are. You didn't want to be late for breakfast, did you? Let's feed you over here. Old CWC, we're gonna see you over at New York City and we go and feed the chickens next. There's something about watching pigs run. I just love seeing the pigs running around in this little pasture every day. What are you girls up to? Huh? What are you up to? I've been so busy on the barn bill that I haven't been keeping you guys updated on some of the other farm stuff going on. And I apologize for that. We have such a short season here that when we have a big project going on, I try to stay like laser focused and get it done. Especially since we've been having some beautiful weather without any rain. It's like perfect opportunity to be working on the barn. But we also castrated little man a week last week, the week before. We banded him, and so now he's gonna be a weather. He won't be a buck. We can keep him with the ladies. So that is a good thing. We've ordered our firewood. I believe today they're gonna to start delivering our first load of firewood. I need to figure out what I'm gonna build for a structure this year to keep our firewood in. We had some temporary bins that we used to keep our firewood stored in, and we had to move all those and take them apart when we redid the lane. So now it's kind of like, all right, we got to build something again. Do we build those temporary structures again? Or do we do something different? What do you think we should do for firewood storage this year? Leave it in the comments down below. I got a few ideas. I'm thinking something more permanent and not temporary. That being said, we're supposed to have some more beautiful weather today and tomorrow. So I can't wait to see how much work we can get done on the post and beam barn. Thank you, Willow. You want the rest of the alfalfa now there, Hope? There we go. New kiddos ready to come out. Come on, Magnolia. Little man. Little P. Huh? Morning. Hey, my friend is not gonna give you any milk. Nope. You gotta eat hay and drink water. Your water's doing good in here. Yeah, you're doing good. You're doing good. I'm curious to see if CWC is over at New York City waiting for the feeding time over there this morning. Let's see. I don't see her yet. Or she's waiting on the back side. Nope, she must still be over with the pigs. Look who I see, guys. Ah, oh, here she comes. I just fed the olive egg glaze and black copper marans turned around and there she is. Which way is she coming? Let's see if we can get her on camera sneaking in. So 
so yesterday we got up our rafters and then we got our strapping up today we need to put the little short fly blocks for our fly rafter and then we can install all of our fascia boards and our shadow boards and five of the 206 900s right here look at that 206 900 one two three four five i like it i could have done this step yesterday before we put those rafters in place but one two th so we only need to do four because the fifth one is right there we already have that one on the building oh no we don't we need to go i see what we're doing so yeah we need one two three four five so four of them go on the two by six rafter the fifth one goes on this two by eight ledger board right here so let's get all this on the stage in I'll bring the stage in over grab the headphones grab some clamps our ear hose I have to make a mental note to myself when we go to do this step on the next eave overhang to put these boards on the end rafters before we put the rafters up. Got the framing gun. Gonna need some nails. Now we'll set these next ones right here. Make sure we're flush. These quick clamps are definitely our friends on this build. It'll be a lot easier next time when we have this all installed before we put the rafter up. Let's toenail one in the bottom. we reposition the stage and let's take a look let's put up our eve overhang fascia boards and we'll work this way as we're moving the stage in i can go over here like so it's like right here 
we have our shadow boards for the fly rafters. Looks like our fascia boards for the fly rafters. And my guess is this is the last fascia board. It's 108. Right here. So that'll do that. Awesome. So for this one, we'll be able to use our siding gun. Let's see what face I like. I like this face right here. It's got a nice edge on it. Now they said they sent these boards long so they can get cut. I just want to make sure we fall on layout. If not, I'll cut it back to a joist, to a rafter, 10 feet. See, I'm thinking that we're gonna have to cut them because we added nine inches per side. So 10 feet would fall there. So I'd have to go 105. Stick this there, our saw. Right. Is there one end we want to cut off over another end? Nope, they both look nice. That board looks good. So let's go 105. That'll bring us to layout. Let's double check again. Measure twice and cut once. 105. First one set in place. The big thing we need to make sure is that we're flush on that end and that we're not sticking above this piece of strapping. I think once we get this first one set, we'll be in a lot easier, better shape. check here we're low so back down here probably low yep dropped okay I like that give it a clamp I like that I like that okay are uh, we still flush on this edge no give it a little tap there we're good there now good there a good there. And a good here. Awesome. So let's do this. Good. 
good right there. Set it up like so. So let's put on our back fascia board here. And then we'll do the front fascia board and then we can go around and do this shadow board because this shadow board will come and it'll go past this fascia board and we'll get that on on both sides and then we'll come back and we'll do the fascia boards or the shadow boards on the eave overhangs last. Look at these real quick. Double check we grabbed the right one. 108 10 400. So let's do this right here. 108 10 400. So we're going to take the one that is the least attractable. We're going to have on the front the nicest looking board, which is this one. All right, so what about if we take this board and attach it like that? I like it. And then that'll give our fascia board something to set on on this end. Let's do this one. It's a little bit longer. And then one here. There. Now we can set our board down here. Let's see. Ooh. staple on the way. I know I don't want to do this to my bench made but uh, I had to be careful. Oh that lines up so nice right there guys. Let's get it marked. It's a nice clean cut. These are all the little steps that end up taking so much time, but in the long run, it's worth it. It's going to look a lot nicer. I like that there. Let's double check it right here. Boom, it's golden. All right, we'll 
have to bring that one up a smidge. I like that. Let's see. It's gonna go something like that. Starting with here. Flush there and here. There. Thinking we're gonna put this shadow board up next, then this shadow board to cover this end grain. We're gonna be looking at it this way. We're not gonna be looking at it this way, if that makes sense. So we'll put this shadow board on next, but that shadow board will go on last. All right, let's get this in a position. clamp on this one. I like that right there. Put that down here. Just went ahead and I marked the front side. Now we're gonna cut it to length. how wide these are four inches just a whisker under four inches and then we have three and three quarters so this is the shortest one three and three quarters three and three quarters so what I want to do this will be my last board this will be the one that's least seen. Set this one right here. I have a couple of screws to set this shadow board on. I might have went too far with that one. I did. Bummer. Oh, well, maybe not. All right, right there. I'm gonna have to clamp it again. All right, that's nice and flush. Let's come this way, just uh, here. I like that right there. Come down a whisker. Everything's nice and flushed up. <clears throat> Grab the nail gun. Let's 
still flush. All right, now we need to work it down a little bit. We can do that. I like that right there. No, we're out of nails. We're out of nails, I mean it's time for some water. Grab some nails. Let's get this one up and in position. The board's a little bit narrower than these other ones, so I'm gonna leave it down so the bottoms are flushed. Let's clamp it there. I like that right there. Once we have the tin on, you won't notice that. You notice it from the underside if you had this board up higher. Get one clamp on it for now. Pressure on that little camp clamp. I like it. Oh yeah, I like it. That looks nice. Nice there, there. We're nice and flush the whole way across the top. It's gonna look nice. It's that time already to give the animals their afternoon snack. I, <laughs> I listen to Blossom. I give our pigs, here they come, they know it. Oh, you better watch out there, CWC. I feed our pigs three times a day. I feed them this, this way this year, so that way I can spread out the feed where I want them to dig up the dirt more. I used to feed them with an automatic feeder and just keep the feeder full. Each pig will eat about 20 bags of food, and that'll get them to about the 250 to 300 pound mark. It's down there. It's over there. Watch out. 
The girls want some more hay. Save that for the kids. I'll grab a flake. Goats graze all day long and they always like to have hay in front of them. So I'll put a couple of flakes out throughout the day. I find if I put the hay out throughout the day, they're like, oh, it's something new and they eat it and they're more content where if I just put a bunch out all at once, they're not as content as long. Huh, you want your babies? You kiddos need some more hay? Sure looks like it, huh? Give you some fresh hay. I don't know of a good hay feeder to use for the kids. The one we used before, we had, it was Buttercup when she was a kid, got her head stuck up and in it, and she was kind of hanging. So I took that hay feeder down. Now for the kids, if it's just them back here, I'll put it on the ground on that board. Well, they can eat out of that big, big hay feeder, but if I make a, one of those style hay feeders for back here, they're just gonna get in their food anyways and make a mess, so might as well just stick it in the ground, right? But if you know of a better hay feeder for the kid goats, leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to know. Huh? Yeah. Cool beans. Hope's just over there eating away. Uh, no, crazy white chickens over at the pigs. I feel like one of the chickens is starting to look like super, super white. She is, but she has like black on her tail. Yeah, yeah she's white with black on her tail. How many eggs do you think we're gonna get today? Um, we have 15 or so I think like either 19 or 20. 19 or 20, okay. It was. I wonder if that broody chicken's in here. I hope we broke her of the brood. We'll find out. Nope. It's still in here. We didn't break you of the brood. Hey. I just keep pushing her off the nest. Are there any eggs under you? Go ahead. Yeah, there's one. She doesn't want me having it. <laughs> so five, seven, nine, wait, nine, eleven. And she's leaving. Let's see if she comes out here squawking. Nope. There she goes. You were close. Yeah. It's funny how sometimes at the end of the day you sit back and you go, what did I do today? Like today I'm like, what did we do? We put up a fascia boards and we put up the trim boards. or well, the shadow boards I should say. It's like, man, it doesn't seem like that much, but it's so funny how in life, not just building projects, but in a lot of stuff, that the little finesse things take so much time and when you're thinking, sitting back at the end of the day, like, what did I get done? You don't really think about it, but those are the little details that make it worth it. At the end of the day, when you have the nice trim up, and you can sit back and you can look at it and go, that looks nice. If you just do it quick, at the end of the day, you're going to be looking at it going, man, I should have took my time a little bit more. And, but while you're doing it, sometimes it seems like it's taking so long. And I think that's just what most journeys in life like the homesteading journey it's such a slow progression it builds over time and if you get momentum going but every time you want to do a project or you want to start a new endeavor it starts off slow but you're better off taking your time getting it right and then through the rest of your journey you're going to enjoy be able to sit back and feel good about what you've got accomplished just re-listen to that during editing and i 
Well, I just wanted to add something to that. I'm not saying don't try something and don't do something and don't be afraid if you get it wrong. But what I'm, what I'm trying to get across is if it takes extra time or takes longer than you think, don't get mad at yourself or don't get down because it's a progress and we're all going to get there. Well, thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. You're a true blessing to us in our homestead. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, the guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.